This is a 2005 Ford Excursion, which is a full-size heavy-duty SUV that Ford manufactured from the 2000 to 2005 model year before it was discontinued. Now, just as the Ford Expedition is built on the F-150 platform, this Excursion is basically the same idea, taking a Ford F-250 pickup and converting it into an SUV format. The result is the largest and heaviest SUV ever mass produced. It's wider, longer, and taller than a Chevy Suburban, and it weighs almost as much as an H1 Hummer. And for certain owners, like the prior owner of this vehicle, that's not enough. This truck's got a 37 inch set of wheels and tires and a massive lift kit. It is an outrageous SUV. Driving this thing down the road, it looks like everything around you is just a little ant. It's uh, pretty crazy overall. Um, these vehicles have a huge following. They also uh, have been very uh, heavily criticized as being a huge environmental killer, being over the top. And in some sense that's true because it is the largest, heaviest SUV ever mass produced, terrible gas mileage. But at the same time, I would argue that the excursion actually isn't quite as bad as its reputation is. Um, you look at the Ford F-250 pickup, and this is just an SUV version of that, the F-250 doesn't really get that bad rap because it's a work vehicle. The Excursion's essentially the same thing. It's a family vehicle. It's got that third row seat so you can transport around your large family, fit all of your um, cargo in the back, and you can also pull a heavy trailer, uh, you know, travel trailer, a boat, a utility trailer. And so it really is a great vehicle in that sense for accomplishing those family needs while also having the ability to pull those heavy loads. So. Um, I think that there's actually a lot to be said about the Excursion, and I think it's kind of unfortunate they discontinued this model, um, given that the F-250 is already out there, and making an SUV format of that vehicle isn't all that hard, and I think there's definitely a demand for it. The result, though, is because this vehicle has been discontinued for 15 years, it's developed a very large following. There are a lot of Excursion fans out there that love these vehicles, and it's also had a really uh, large impact on the resale value of these vehicles, because they aren't made anymore. Now, in terms of styling on the Excursion, because it's based off of that F-250 pickup, it's essentially the same in terms of the overall styling. From the front of the vehicle, all the way to the back of these passenger doors, it's a Ford F-250 crew cab. The only thing that's really different is from here to the back of the vehicle, where they just kind of put a box on the top and throw in a third row seat. So you're getting the same vehicle, as one of those crew cab F-250s. Now starting up here at the front, you will see on the 2005 models that they've got a revised grille design. This was a refresh done in 2005, again to match the F-250. Um, you also see that this vehicle has a set of aftermarket headlights. So it gives it a little bit newer look, the LED strip there. You'll see we've got a couple tow hooks integrated here, and then our fog lights. Got the step down hood here um, that's distinct on the F series heavy duty pickups when compared with the F 150, giving it that more rugged, heavy duty look. And then coming around the side, a great looking overall SUV, just like the F 250. I really like the boxy proportions of this vehicle. It's got some really nice clean lines. One of my favorite design cues on both the F 250 and the Excursion is how the window kind of drops down right here. So you've got massive tow mirrors here with integrated blinkers and they've got a little inset. You'll see this one's damaged on the driver's side. They're also heated. This inset really helps with visibility, giving you another angle, which is very important on a vehicle of this size. We've also got the little Ford key code here, which allows you to access the vehicle without a key. Nice little chrome strip along the bottom of the doors here. Now the Excursion is available in four different trim packages for 2005. They have the XLS, the XLT, the Eddie Bauer model, and the Limited model. This is the Limited model, which is a luxury model of the Excursion. So you'll see, um, you know, on the exterior, some of these accents. That's part of what you get with this package. And then inside, it's got a lot of nice luxury features. On the back of the vehicle, a really cool uh, rear tailgate here where it's three sections. So we've got the glass on the top and then the two barn doors on the bottom. You'll see we've got parking sensors in the rear bumper. Again, very helpful for a vehicle of this size. And then we've got our trailer hitch. And then you also see that we've got revised tail lights here. These are an aftermarket change to this excursion. So overall, pretty good looking vehicle. Uh, the 37 inch wheels and tires in the lift kit are definitely not my style. 
but it does give the vehicle a really unique look and driving the thing it feels like you are driving a monster truck due to the height of this vehicle getting in could be a monumental task fortunately it is equipped with a set of aftermarket electronic running boards that drop down from amp research inside the cabin you'll see it's nearly identical to that f-250 pickup it's a pretty basic overall design despite the fact that this is the limited model and that's just really showing you the progress of luxury trucks and SUVs over the last 15 years. It does have full leather seating with the wood accents. You also see we've got the limited lettering stitched in on the driver and front passenger seat. As far as standard options on this vehicle, we've got power windows, power door locks, and power mirrors. Memory settings for two drivers. Our driver and front passenger seat are partially powered and heated. Got controls for that on the side here. To the left of the steering column, we've got a dial for the headlights, as well as for adjusting the dimming of the instrument cluster. Steering wheels got controls on the left-hand side for cruise control and right-hand side for audio and climate. The climate piece is very unusual. I don't know if I've seen that in any vehicle before. and I'm definitely a fan. Pretty basic instrument cluster. And then we've got our gear shifter here with an overdrive feature. Center dash, we've got some vents, aftermarket audio system. Down here on the left, we've got electronically controlled four wheel drive system with a four low and high option. Got a button for heated rear windshield and ability to turn off parking sensors. Below that, we can electronically adjust the position of the gas and brake pedal. And then you'll see this vehicle is also equipped with a trailer brake controller. We've got, again, our aftermarket audio system. And below that, we've got climate control, which is a dual zone system with heat and air conditioning. This pulls out and we've got two cup holders. And right above that, we've got a 12 volt outlet. Again, another 12 volt outlet here and a little hook here that you can hang like a garbage bag or something. Center console's got two cup holders. We've got this remote for the rear entertainment system. And then this large console opens up. Pretty spacious inside. Up above, we've got a self-dimming rear view mirror, an LCD screen with trip and fuel economy information, climate control for the rear of the vehicle. We've got two vent controls for the rear windows. You'll see that those tilt out just slightly to get venting in the cabin. And then we've got a couple compartments here. And then on our driver visor, we've also got the ability to program up to three garage door openers. In the middle row, you'll see that it's very spacious here. Plenty of room for those rear passengers. Our middle seat folds down into an armrest. And then our center console here has two cup holders, a 12 volt outlet and media audio controls for our system up here in the ceiling. Got the screen that drops down. DVD player over here on the right hand side. And then you can also adjust climate settings from the rear of the vehicle. And you'll see that we've got vents built into the ceiling as well. To access the third row, we can pull on this lever here. Sorry, push it that direction. Seat folds forward and then the whole seat slides. We've got a 60-40 split, so you can do that on either the driver or passenger side. And you'll see that it gives us pretty large access to this rear seat, where we've got room for three more passengers. Pretty decent legroom back here. And then we've got a compartment built in on both sides, as well as a cup holder. And then coming around to the back of the vehicle, again, we've got this top portion that opens up really handy to have this feature available so that you can open up this top hatch get things out of the vehicle without everything tumbling out of the bottom and then if you do need wider access to the back you can open up this bottom door as well as this side door as well to have larger access to the rear so pretty useful setup here and you will see that inside it's very spacious over the life of the excursion, it was offered with four different engine options. The base engine was a 5.4 liter Triton V8 with 255 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. 
This excursion's got the 6.8 liter V10 with 310 horsepower and 425 pound-feet of torque. And then they offered two different diesel engine options. Older versions of the excursion have a 7.3 liter V8 diesel with 250 horsepower and 525 pound-feet of torque. And then middle of 2003, they updated that engine to a 6 liter V8 diesel, which has 325 horsepower and 560 pound-feet of torque. That engine is also paired to a 5-speed automatic, whereas the other three engines are paired to 4-speed automatics. Due to the classification of the excursion and its size, it was exempt from EPA fuel economy ratings, but you can imagine that they weren't all that good. And then max tow capacity on the excursion peaked out at 9,200 pounds when equipped with the diesel. Well, if you want an excursion with good ride quality, I'd highly recommend that you don't go with this type of a lift setup. Keep it at that stock ride height and don't go with the 37 inch wheels and tires. It absolutely destroys the ride quality. It is super stiff, very choppy, uh, ruins the ride quality off road and on the road, but it is very effective in giving the vehicle that monster truck effect. Driven another one before, that one was pretty good overall. Um, although I will say that a heavy duty Suburban or Yukon XL is gonna have better ride quality than the Excursion. The difference though is that you don't get the same tow capacity or size that you get with the Excursion. Now, <laughs> the Excursion, again, it's a massive SUV with a terrible reputation for fuel economy. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you don't care about that. You're one of those loyal Excursion fans. For me personally though, driving this one with the 37 inch wheels and tires and that massive lift kit, I'm a little bit embarrassed being in public. I wish I had tinted windows so nobody could see inside and shame me with the glare of their eyes. But again, if you're watching this video, you're probably a fan of the Excursion. You don't care about the gas mileage or the environmental impact. More power to you. Um, you're certainly driving a massive vehicle uh, with good tow capacity, so there you go. No one else has that on you. Um, but I will say, driving this vehicle in town, it is the weirdest effect with other cars around you because they sit so far down to the ground. Everything looks tiny around you. You know, on this open road with nobody else around, I don't get that quite as much, but as soon as I've got someone sitting next to me, it's just appalling to see the size difference between these, this vehicle and others. All right, we'll pull onto the highway here and put that V10 and those 310 horsepower to the test. See, it's not a quick vehicle. Whoa, pretty abrupt shift from that transmission too. <laughs> Mind you, this is only a four-speed automatic, so it's not gonna be quite as good as what you'll get with that five-speed um, in newer diesel versions of the Excursion. Um, the other thing that I do wanna also mention about the Excursion is that braking isn't all that impressive, and certainly once you put um, a lift kit like this on with those 37-inch wheels and tires, absolutely destroys that braking capability. It feels like my foot is literally on the asphalt dragging the vehicle to a stop. Um, so that's a look at the overall driving characteristics and ride quality on the Excursion. Again, you're going to do a lot better in a stock Excursion. If you want a monster truck like this, there will be some downsides. So there you go. That's the 2005 Ford Excursion. This is a great option for somebody that wants a large family vehicle. Going to have plenty of space for passengers, plenty of space for cargo, and also have the ability to tow heavy loads. It's also a great option for somebody that wants a pseudo monster truck and wants to do a conversion like what we've got right here. If you have any comments or questions on the excursion, leave them in the section below. For more car reviews, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching.